When I started DJing, uh, this was back in 1988-89, uh, 20 years ago, more or less. I started because of my sisters. I would see my sisters go out to parties, and when they would come home late at night, I would always listen to them say how great the party was and how well the music was. So it built my curiosity. From my aspect, um, uh, the only reason why I still DJ is because I produce music. And since I want my music to be played, it's best that I play it first. Now, I remember before, you know, I used to go to a record shop and spend time there spending for each record. At that time, it was like six, seven dollars imports over, you know, 10, 15, 20 dollars. And, and, and just taking the time of going out there and going buying records and socializing. Now it's to the point that, you know, you can't find that wax, you can't find that track that you want. You just download it. Uh, the, the biggest change in the music scene has been almost everything. It's been uh, addition of new uh, outlets, such as the internet. Uh, actually, uh, the different type of music software that people can make music uh, for. Uh, the prices of vinyl. If you look at it, I'm not trying to say it's a true DJ, but to put it is, if you look at a true DJ working that wax, I mean, he's turning the knobs. He's moving that pitch control. He's cutting up the wax. He could take a record and slice it up right there, right in front of you, and you enjoy watching what he's doing. I mean, you get in with the CDJ DJs and these controllers and stuff, it, it loses it. It gets, it gets boring. Now that the new cats are coming in, all these kids are watching these guys doing it. They don't see... They don't see the excitement no more. Up next, the original, the original player from the Himalayas, DJ B. Cool Out, right here on the Hot Big Show, ShyTownVibes.com, SoulJackDigital.com, and Justin.tv. Enjoy the next set. Uh, we had passive speakers, so that meant a whole rack of amplifiers we had to carry. Nowadays, um, speakers are active, built-in amplifiers, and, you know, I use controllers now. makes it easier for me to get around. I use the core pad, and I also use the Tractor X1. Back in the days, you would have to just play two tracks. Now you got the advance of editing the track, putting something that's old to something that's new, making it, you know, something brand new. Getting it, getting the crowd hype. Swiftly moving beyond anything conceivable. Yes, we are. There's a a saying in Mexico, and it's actually printed on a lot of records that are printed in Mexico. And that phrase that is printed on the records, on every record that I've seen, it says "El disco es cultura." The the records are culture. And it's a tangible, it's tangible music. It's music you can grab, you can hold on to, uh, you can collect. I'm taking technology and actually it allows me to be more expressive. I can take the music, I can cut it up the way I want, I can sample it, I can trigger it. I can't do that with a turntable. I am using analog, digital, uh, in, in the same way, but I don't see it as analog versus digital. I see it more as compromising. Compromising in the sense that you are on a turntable, but you're controlling a digital file. All of it is that the, the trackers and stuff, you can be a lot more lazier with CDs and wax. You have to search. And that's the fun of it because then you, you can't uh, be lazy. Right now, I mean, 
the market is open to everybody. It's open to everybody and you can make a name for yourself just like that. The hip hop scene did it. The house heads have done it. I mean, it's it's just open for everybody. You know, it's just, there's too many DJs out there. A lot of new DJs that they basically mix for free, you know? That kind of messes up the market. You got mixtapes, like people selling them at the stores for cheaper value than what a, what it should be, you know? A lot of clubs do not respect the DJ. They get any Joe Schmo to come in. Before, they wanted that cat. You know, oh, we want that DJ, he works that wax. Now they, they got to the point of, oh, he's just working this two CD player, what's so hard? And, and, and it's sad to say, because you know, before, in the 80s and 90s, you did a set, and you they appreciate that set, because they saw how hard you worked. I'm, I'm sad, it's sad to say it, but DJing has gone commercial. And, I mean, you can take it as a good or a bad thing, because you know, you're, you're showing people the, the, the form of what it's supposed to, but at the same time, we go back to what I, I was talking about, which DJing is supposed to be an art form. It's, you know, it's supposed to be just like if you're a, uh, an artist, that takes an art form. There's no program that's gonna show you how to, you know, be the best Picasso out there, you know? It, it's just, it's something similar to that. And I think it, it needs to go back to an underground form. It cannot be about, oh, money, 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 money. For people that are interested in music or DJing, they see these, what I call superstar DJs, and they wanna be like that person, but they don't have the love for the music. So I, I tell them, you know what, why don't you download some software, try it. I go, try mixing four hours on the weekend. Increase it to six, let's see how long you can last. The reason why Masters in the Mix became so popular in the 90s was when I invaded the situation, the first thing I told them, I will not bring you a tape. I have to perform this live. There's no other better way. You gotta feel it. It's the touch. Nothing like it. Yeah, vinyl is just uh, a part of me. It's uh, it's a collection of memories. Uh, every vinyl that I have, uh, that I've bought in my in the past, I've represents a certain time. Helps me remember a certain time of my life of something that has happened. And every time I play them on turn on the turntable, it just brings me back. And I guess. That's one of the things that I feel that I can't let vinyl go.